Okay, so this is going to be video number five in the learning about Rosh Shmuel Harwitz, reading the whole entire Sefer Yemei Shmuel. We are up to Perik Yedalit. Um, we finished off last video talking about um, uh, Rosh, Shmuel, Rosh Shmuel Harwitz was talking about his youth as a kid, going to Meron, all these different stories. And he continues now in Perik Yedalit, chapter 14. Um, more memories and more zechroinus about Meron and Lag Blamer. So he says over here, and he says, I remember one year when we would ride horses and donkeys to Meron for Lag Blamer, and a lot of people used to go by feet, by foot, and the whole entire way from Tzfat to Meron uh, was full of men, women, and children, like every year. And one time, it happened that um, these uh, Arab robbers, you know, you know, ambushed them and jumped on them, right in the middle, in between Tzfat and Meron. Um, and this is uh, next to a great rock over there, that is by the cave of Rabbi Yosi Dimin Yukras, the Zecher Tzadik Levracha. So that actually is on the road now from Tzfat to Meron. After after the entrance to Kedita, um, a little bit after Tzomet Ein Zetim, you can see that area over there. So that's actually pretty cool. I've walked Meron many times in the forest. There's a beautiful hike from Tzfat to Meron with uh, you know natural springs and kfarim, but I guess they went a different way. Anyway, and they hit these, and they you know these Arabs, they were hitting people, and they stole everything, and there was a lot of great fear in a lot of people, but. The, the, but the officers of the Memshala of the Turkish people, which was the Turkish government, which was in control of Eretz at that time, uh, chased after them and caught them, and they took everything back that they stole from us, um, and they put these robbers in jail, and that's it. And from then on, Baruch Hashem, we never had any other incidents like that. Now he continues, he says, the, he says that the men of the custom of my father... Many times was that when I was a little kid, we would go to Meron for the, the whole entire summer. We would live um, in a room in the in the in the Moishav's Zikenim, Shenimtsa Bikfar Meron. So I've seen this thing. I never really did research on it. I mean, like a Moishav Zikenim sounds like an old age home, or like, I guess where people would live. So I guess there was one in the Kfar Meron during the summers or whatever. People would vacation there. I guess I'm not really sure exactly. But they, but they lived over there. That's where Rashmul Harowitz and his family um, would go. Which was um, there, right? Uh, in Kfar Meron. Hold on a second. And this was Shaykh to the Ashkenazi. These, these, um, these rooms. The rooms that were actually in the courtyard of Rashmul Baruchai. Today you could still see rooms over there. The, those were Shaykh. Those were... Um, you know, in control by the Svartan. Um and his and his sister, my father's sister, who's my aunt, and she would send us every single day. She would send us every day or every two days some food with a donkey. Uh, a Jewish guy, a Yehudi Svardi b'shem Hamas. Huh? That's pretty intense, man. Um, Hamas. That's an intense name, but okay. And every day we would go on Tzion of Hashem Bar Yochai. We would dive, we would learn, and we would go a lot of times also Arab Shchaydesh, especially Lag Boimer, and the Shchaydesh El, and also especially on Chaf Hey El, which is the um, which many many people would come even back then and make another Hadlaka. Then they say that Chaf Hey El, the twenty fifth day of El. The day that the world was created, and it's also the Hilula of Rabbi Lazar ben Rishon Bar Yochai, who was the son. Rabbi Lazar was the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, and obviously, of course, in Zayin Adar, which is Moshe Rabbeinu's yard site and his day of birth, according to the Gemara, everybody would go to Meru. Okay, now he continues. He says, in the year Tafresh Ayin Gimel, the Goyin the Ridvaz got very sick, and we davened a lot. Um, even on the first night of Rosh Hashanah, um, 
and also that Rosh when you say the special foods, the special Yihi is on the apple and the honey and all the stuff, we also pray for him over there. Um, but on the letter Rosh Hashanah, Taf Reish Ayin Dalet, I guess, yeah, I mean that Rosh Hashanah, he was Nifter, um, and uh, what's it called? And they and they uh, buried him. The Chavad Gadol Ma'id. He's buried close to the army, I believe. Shana Azois, and in this year the First World War broke out. And after Shana, um, after Shana, they did a lot of his spades on him in all the different shuls in the city, in the base classes of the Maria Buav, which I was like to go like pretty much like once a week, twice a week when I give tours to people in Tzvat, and also in the base classes of Beis Yosef. And there was a lot of people who were crying. And the Radvaz, he left in the city a great yeshiva and a Talmud Torah and a great name for many people and Tzvar. Um, in the summer of Tafri Shayin Dad, I have no idea what year that is, but I'm assuming it's like probably like 1912, 13, 14, yeah, 14, 15, something like that. There was Likui I think that's a, um, how do you say, an eclipse. Of the sun. Um, the Gemara writes, Ashmol Harwood says that the Gemara writes that there is, the, when they have um, uh, what's it called, a, a sun eclipse or an eclipse of the sun, it's when an Av Basin passes away and they don't mass him correctly, they don't mourn from correctly. Uh, and they, and, these, and Ashmol Harwood says that this is probably. You know the case with uh, Rabbeinu Haridvaz that we did not be maspid him ka'alacha. And also it was after now this is in parentheses he also says after another few years Shabbos shall Ishtim the grandfather of my wife Agoy Rav Moshe Nachum Valenstein shall your Rosh Av based in Gadol of Yushalayim. And after he died there was also Likui Chama Nishlei Spido Eisay Ka'alacha. I think the Likucham is that I'm not I'm not going to look it up right now but I'm like pretty sure like that's what it is anyway the Klal is he always says the Klal like this is what was going on you know everybody was talking about the war um, and also in that year that we saw in the sky a star with a very long tail which is probably a comet or a meteor she said Gam Merami Zam Lichama Shana Nasol Lichagash Voice and that year my grandfather went to, um, um, what's it called? He went to Yushalayim for Shavuos and also to do in Yanim for Koyal Chabad here in Tzfas. Abu Ba'avir, already in the ear, you could already feel see money of the Muhammad, the war that was coming. And everybody was talking, Muhammad, Muhammad. The Kachzev, the Kachzev. Um, on Tishabav in that year, Tafri Shain Dalit, that is when the war broke out. And the reason why the war, oh, we get a little history lesson over here. The reason why the war was because of why, that the son of the king of Austria, he was killed in the country of Serbia. So Austria went out on a Muhamma against Serbia, and the Germans went with Austria, and they were talking about how the Germans were preparing for many years for this war, and they used this opportunity to go out to war, to, contr- to capture a lot of the world. Um, and then afterwards, also the Turks got involved. And the Turkish people were in control of Eretzol at the time. They were, they were, they controlled Eretzol, Syria, Iraq, Ube Aram, Tsaiva, not sure what that is, I think Lebanon or something maybe. Ube Medina's Arab, and all the other Arab countries. Ube Shem Kashu's Medina, Serbia, when they captured Serbia, Russia went to help Serbia, and also England and Sarfat, France, and Starful of Russia, Russia, and then it was a world war. So that is our history lesson of the day of how World War One started. And the Germans, at that point, captured uh, they captured Belgium, they captured Belgium, um, and Russia captured cities in Austria, and sometimes they were Matzichim, sometimes not. Um, the Germans captured basically all of Poland and many 
sections of Russia. And they were very successful. But in the war of the ships in the sea, the English were against the Germans, and then also they pulled into the war of the Turks, and then the war came to Erzro. And also the Germans captured a lot from Tsarfat, and they wanted to capture the whole world. <laughs> Hashem caused America to get involved in the war against the Germans and the Turks until the end of the war. So that's a cool little uh, situation. Let's see, I got a message over here. Um, okay, I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little short video this week. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll do another one next week, hopefully.